Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, the Innkeeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. Now, before I introduce my special guest, as I just had previously mentioned, we are going to do a an Unpacking Jordan Con show this weekend, where we talk about Rafe Judkins and what he had to say at the Wadham Prime panel, and also about my interview recently with Brandon Sanderson. I just haven't had a chance to distill it all, so what I thought we'd do is just a live show where we can talk all about that. That'll be this weekend, and then next Walt Wednesday, we're going to do a deep dive, because I just need to do another Nakomi-like show like we did last March. I just want to dig into deep into the Wheel of Time and get geeky with you guys, so Prepare for that next Watt Wednesday. Okay, with that said, tonight you're here to meet who I think is a fantastic artist. I've been watching his work ever since he started posting images of our Watt on Prime actors as their characters in the books. I've loved his work and I reached out to him maybe two months ago and we've been, ma- we've been working to make this happen and it finally has. Let me bring to the show, welcome Corey Lansdell. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Matt. I'm really happy to be here. I want to just skip till next Wednesday and listen to the deep dive, though. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I know. That's uh, I, We haven't done one in a while. We did it, and everyone kind of loved, like, you know, really getting geeky about Nakomi. And and I just haven't, I don't know, you, I just want to dive in again. I, I If I remember correctly, everyone wanted to talk about, uh, well, I don't want to... There's going to be a, a couple spoilers here. I won't, I won't get too spoilery with Wheel of Time here, but we wanted to talk about something having to do with Avienda, and I'll keep it there. But uh, yeah, yeah, great. I, because this isn't a spoiler show. This is for all, hopefully, all fans of the Wheel of Time and art and artists, and hopefully, coming here to support that. Because I mean, it's something you see a lot on Instagram. Uh, you know, I, I you see a lot of artists starting to kind of just do a lot of Wheel of Time stuff, probably because of the resurgence a bit of the interest uh, with the Watt on Prime show. And so it's been a lot of fun. I mean, if if you guys that are watching are not on Instagram. Go there. If you're Wheel of Time fans, it's just, look, beyond the actors, there's tons of fans there, and they're always sharing Wheel of Time stuff. It's great. But I appreciate you making the time tonight. I, mean, I think it has been, right? It's been two months since we started yeah. kind of just Yeah, it's been about two months. Yeah. Uh, describing uh, this moment, you know? Yeah, it's been really uh, fun just kind of like get the back and forth leading up to this has been great. And uh, it's kind of nice because it's given me a little bit of time to finish some some other, some more work, <laughs> which is yeah, awesome. yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, one of the, I think you did, uh, I think between now and then, you did uh, Pat and Fane, yeah. uh, I think was one of, I love that one. Oh, uh, and, and But we'll talk a little bit more about that. I want to I understand how you got here. So sure. tell me a little bit about, like, how did you get into art? Like, were, were you always just a creative kid growing up? Were you that four, three or four year old that just had to draw <laughs> everywhere? Like, how did this come to be? Yeah, I mean, let's jump in the way back machine. Yeah, uh, yeah let's do it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I grew up, my, my dad was a painter um, when I was a kid. He did a lot of landscape painting and stuff like that. I kind of grew up around his work. Um, he worked in oils just on canvas. So I kind of always had a little bit of an affinity for artwork from a young age, watching him kind of do his work and seeing the work that he had done. Um, and my brother uh, is a, just, we're very close in age. He's a year and 10 months older than me. And growing up, I felt like I was always kind of chasing him around in every aspect of life. So he was, uh, he was always better at sports than me. He was always better at drawing than me. He was always just, and I was like, looked up to him. So I tried to emulate what he was doing. And um, he kind of had a very uh, keen interest in figurative drawing and particularly sort of like um, fantasy based stuff. And so Mm -hmm. I sort of would sit, we would spend hours and hours just sitting at the table drawing. Uh, right from a young age, I was I would spend a lot of time drawing, uh, drawing X Men comics and Transformers off the packages and stuff like that. <laughs> Anything I could get my hands on that I loved. So what I had a, favorite. What was your favorite Transformer to draw? Oh, I, I I remember this drawing I did in I was probably ten or eleven. It was Jazz from the <laughs> uh, Generation yeah. One box, the box art. Nice. And uh, I was quite proud of that one. I was like, hey, this is not bad. Things were, I think his one arm was a little too large, like the proportion. <laughs> the proportion, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, sadly, I don't I don't have a lot of that art around anymore. I've got a lot of stuff from high school and college kicking around. But yeah, yeah I so growing up, I loved drawing. Um, all through high school, art was kind of an outlet for me. It kept me sane. Um, I was a pretty angst-ridden kid. I was bullied a lot in my younger years and I don't know, I just had a lot of stuff on my chest that my, came out through my artwork. So it was a little bit of a band-aid and a, a release for me. Yeah. Um, 
And it took art through high school, which was great. I had a very fantastic art teacher, um, Jan Mason. I don't, I don't think she's probably not listening to this, but <laughs> if she is, she should know that she made a huge impact on me and uh, in, my, in terms of my creative life. She was great. Um, and met a lot of really good friends. We used to sit around and draw comic books and at lunch hour and stuff like that and draw like Spawn and all the stuff that we were really into back in the day. And then we would spend our spare time kind of making up our own stories and try to come up with our own ideas. Um, nice. is, your, is your brother still drawing? Is he still? No, my brother, my brother, yeah, a little bit. He, not as much as he used to. I followed in his footsteps to college. So he went to, um, there's a college in the city here, Grant McEwen. It's now McEwen University. Um, and, but back when I was going, it was a little, it was more of a community college type atmosphere. That's where I met my wife. Um, okay. We were in fine arts together there. So I took the fine art program there and got a diploma. Um, and then after getting that, I worked at Home Depot for a number of years in the paint department, which was not what I intended to do with my art diploma. But, <laughs> but the color theory was uh, was helpful in terms of mixing paints and stuff like that. Did you, did you kind of get? Did you kind of take some of that and like instruct? Oh yeah, for like, sure. I had a little bit yeah. of a leg up. I mean, I didn't. I'm not a. I'm not into interior design or anything like that. But I definitely felt like I had a bit of um, a bit of a, an advantage to some of my coworkers. In yeah, regard yeah. To <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I, I realized kind of after working there for a while, I needed to do something else to, if I wanted to make a career out of out of creativity. Sure. So I went back to, um, I mean, I wasn't like, uh, uh, I wasn't one of those fortunate artists that's just so good that they just, you know, get into an art career and people start wanting to put their stuff everywhere and they start selling things. So, right, right, right. Um, so I went back to university after my wife and I got married um, and I got a, de a degree in visual communication design from the University of Alberta. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I worked uh, for a year and a half with uh, Elk Island Public School Board out in Sherwood Park here uh, doing graphic design for the school board. And um, then I started working for myself doing full-time graphic design sort of at the same time. I always, I've always had one thing about me. I've always had like a number of plates uh, spinning at the same time. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. it got to a point where my, my, my side gig got just as busy as my full-time gig and I couldn't ma maintain both. And it was it's right around the time when my daughter was going to be born. I left my, the security of my full-time job to start my own business. Nice. It was is that what, what's the business do? Is it, is it kind of a design firm itself? Well, or? yeah. So, my first business was strictly a graphic design business. I did a lot of, as I was mentioning to you earlier, a lot of front end development stuff, built websites um, and just standard sort of print and, and web design logos sure. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to have a really good friend from high school. One of the friends that I used to sit around and draw with, he was working at the time. Um, he went through fine arts at the university of Alberta. While, while I was running my little graphic design business, he was doing work at Alberta Education uh, for the government, do, building these really cool um, digital online resources. And they needed, needed another artist to come in and help. So he kind of mentioned to me that they were looking for somebody. So I came in there and started working with him on some educational resources from about 2006 till 2009. And so we worked together, which was fun. So my old buddy from high school, we started working together. And then in 09, things slowed down. And that's when we started the company that I'm currently in, which is called Pulp Studios. And uh, we do our primary thing, our bread and butter is uh, 2D animation. So we do oh, cool. a lot of, of uh, explainer videos and informational stuff, education and safety and health related uh, animation work. And so that's my day to day. Uh, that's a full time gig. Um, and I'm still heavily involved in the creative, but lately we've been kind of working with a lot of contractors and uh, I'm able to sort of pull myself out of the creative uh, aspect a little bit more and focusing on the business development and client relationship and management and things of that nature. So that's my kind of day to day. Um, I am getting older, so I find I find that sitting in front of the computer and doing like 14 hour days like I used to of just creative work is really, really difficult now. Um, and so it's it's good. I feel like we're in a good spot. Um, the, the fun thing, one of the best aspects, I think, of that business right now is that it gives me an opportunity to do uh, sort of some extracurricular creative work with Kelly. So just like we did in high school, we've been sitting around and writing some IPs. We've been working on intellectual properties uh, at the studio 
And our goal is to try and get some stuff published. So we're working on specifically some graphic novel stories um, oh, together. Awesome. Yeah, we've actually got one that's uh, it's sold. We're just, the contract's not quite there yet. We had a contract like in place and then COVID came and then everything oh, yeah. on hold and now we're waiting. So, but it's still still uh, gonna happen right away here, so. I'm What's really, the genre? Can you tell us what the genre of that um, graphic novel? Yeah, is? I think I'm. I think I'm safe to share that. It's all ages graphic novels is primarily what we've been working on, uh, developing right now. Yeah. Um, and they're they're kind of primarily sort of the vein of them would be fantasy based, okay. uh, sort of towards fantasy or speculative fiction, um, which is perfect. That's I love that stuff. And yeah, so, I mean, well, you're. From what I can tell on your Instagram page, you're really good at it. I will say. Oh, uh, well, so I'm now. I'm, now I'm kind of curious. So now I can kind of see how you're here in this moment. But why the wheel of time? You know, oh. why was that? Why was that a thing? That, you know, why? Why all of a sudden did you kind of like drop into the stage sure. on Instagram with the wheel of time images yeah. and portraits? I mean, uh, so I've been a fan of the wheel of time books for probably. I want to say I meant to look back today on my. Um, my uh, Audible account to see when I first bought uh, The Eye of the World, um, but I didn't. But I think it's been about four years, maybe five, um, since I've started getting into the books. I've, list I've read slash listened to them through twice now. So the first time I went through, I read, I think, three of the books in the middle and the rest I listened to. Um, nice. And I, I re-listened to them again a second time. So, And I just finished my second listen through, I don't know, two months ago. Um, but I just, I don't know, I fell in love with the story. The storytelling is incredible. Um, I'm, I'm working on some some novels <laughs> in my spare time too. Oh, nice. That's good. <laughs> yeah, this is my problem, Matt. Uh, if there's anybody out there in chat that uh, can give me some counsel today, like a life coach maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, yes, this is a problem. I, I've, I've experienced the same thing, which is uh, too many ideas and too many things to be working on, not, just not enough time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So from from the writing perspective, I'm assuming same kind of speculative fiction kind of. Yeah, for genre. sure. Yeah, fantasy. I've got one. I've got one fantasy story that would be, um, you know, targeted to a same audience, a like minded audience as the Wheel of Time. Then I've got one that's more young adult, uh, maybe, maybe middle grade, um, which is about nice. awesome. Uh, it's pretty funny, uh, fun stuff. Um, so, I mean, so is that the stuff that I see on Instagram that you're posting with the wheel of time characters, is that kind of hobby stuff uh, for you or, you know, is it, or is this just kind of like when you're not doing your full-time business gig, like this is your release. Do you just kind of get yeah. out there and you're like, you, you want to get away from business strategy and running yeah. a company. Yeah, totally. Um, there's layers to it. It's uh, it's, it's a big interest area of mine. So it's fun. Yeah. Uh, I just enjoy it. Um, I, uh, it's, it's, it is a release for sure. Creatively for me, just, to, it's like freedom in a way. Cause my job is great. It affords me a lot of opportunity for creativity, but, um, I'm still somebody else's hand at the end of the day, uh, mm -hmm. bringing other people's creative visions to life. And this way I get to kind of, I don't know, just push my own, my own thinking. It's also a growth piece for me. Um, I try to challenge myself with the work. And so these pieces that I'm doing are at times very challenging for me. Uh, and so it's an opportunity for me to just kind of stretch those muscles and kind of work towards some goals. I'm kind of curious about, I'm kind of curious about that word, that challenge. What do you mind sharing with the, with all the fans watching? What is the, what's the challenge here that you're kind of working through? Like uh, as mm -hmm. far as these pieces are concerned? Yeah. Well, so with the wheel of time stuff specifically, I wanted to, when I, when I found out the show was like going to come, it was going to be a thing. I was like just waiting for them to announce some casting. And when they, when they announced Rosamund Pike, I was like, Oh my gosh, I got all like freaked out and excited. And I was like, I gotta do something. So those, these pieces were for me an opportunity to um, see the, the actors that they were bringing to the table as the characters. And so it's, a, they're kind of a neat piece because they're a little bit of like just a straight up portrait because I'm just por doing portraiture of the art of the actors. But they're also, there's a layer of, um, of design or character design in there or, and costume design and stuff that, because there's no, I mean, besides the footage that we have of Yosha Stradowski on the edge of that cliff and he's wearing a winter jacket, we don't really have like people in costumes yet, right? Yeah. There's not a lot out there. So 
Um, so it's a little bit of a, a neat exercise for me, sort of in concept design as well as creative, um, just portraiture. Uh, so that layer of things is challenging, just trying to extrapolate from my own sort of headcanon of what I think the characters would look like uh, and marrying that with the features of the care of the of the actors, um, it's a little bit challenging. To like, it's challenging to pull myself out of my own uh, imaginings of what the characters are like and sort sure. of for what for who they are now uh, in this uh, manifestation on the the TV show. So there's kind of like a little bit of a divorcing myself from my own understanding of what I think the characters look like, and then um, trying to marry these contemporary visions of the characters often with some medieval or not medieval, but uh, fantasy based clothing and, and design. Yeah. I think you've done that really well. We, we don't have the video here, unfortunately, but I, I was, was more rain the first image, the first one you did. Let's yeah. See. Let's well, it, just, it was the, so the first wheel of time piece I did was um, I did a quick sort of, I it was before they did any casting and I was just thinking about, I was starting to think about doing like fan cast wheel of yeah. time art. Just like sure. who, who would they cast? So I did a drawing of Mads Madsen, oh, okay. uh, yeah. of um, of him as uh, Lan, because I just thought his stony, rigid face would be like a perfect face for Lan. So I did a that was my first sort of wheel of time. That's the first one you'd done, okay. Related piece, but um, but then yeah, shortly after that they they announced uh, uh, Moraine, and so that was the first piece I did in relationship to the to the series. Yeah, I'd love to talk about that one. We can throw that one up on the screen with Moraine. Um, you know, the, I this is one of the most, for me, I don't know, it's, there's just something, there's something so tangible about how you've drawn her. There's just, it's, yeah, it draws me in when I just, I, I love, I mean, we should just leave this image up the rest of the time. No, we won't do that. But, um, yeah, I love what here, and I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit about, like, what was your, what was your process when it came yeah. to, drawing this character because it clearly looks like her i mean that looks like moraine to me right uh for the show i'm just kind of curious like what and i'm assuming all the fans are too like how do you go about doing that i mean i mm -hmm. i'm a uh, i'm a designer when it comes to software design and f art fascinates me because i i think maybe i'm just you know like i want to be able to do that <laughs> but when i watch people do it i'm just like so fascinated by it so yeah i'd love sure. to hear hear process sure yeah um yeah so with that one in particular and it's been very similar with the rest of them too I imagined, so it kind of goes, there's layers to it. When I think about the Aes Sedai, I've often imagined their, so the styling of their clothing is sort of a blend between um, sort of Renaissance European stuff and Japanese. And mm -hmm. so part of it is like pulling images from online that I feel like match my vision of what the, the costume would look like. So for that piece, I had pulled a number of sort of dresses and stylings from a few different places and then tried to sort of marry them together um, I don't, you don't see a lot, obviously, of her, her uh, costuming, but uh, there is that aspect to it in most of them where I'm, I'm trying to imagine that. So there's layers of sort of research applied to it. Oh, cool. And then I spend on some of them, I spend a lot of time looking at existing images and footage of the actors. Um, I never, I'm sort of careful. I don't want to like default to the first image that comes up on Google search. <laughs> so I spent some time kind of like looking at show reels and different things on YouTube, like of the actors, um, trying to find footage and stuff that I feel will match the the feel of the character in relationship to the wheel of time. And so, yeah, so it's a little bit of like then like researching and digging through reams and reams of photos of the actors until I find something that I think will work. And then there's a bit of like some trickery that I have to do sometimes with lighting because sometimes their faces are lit differently than how I want the piece yeah. to come across or something. So I'm changing things a little bit. Um, I work in Procreate. And so okay. yeah. that's, that's primarily what I've been working in for a while. I have worked a lot in Photoshop as well. But uh, over the past year and a half, I've been working almost exclusively in procreate for well, this that's a, that's a good call out. I, i'm sure people were wondering uh you know probably a question that would show up later which is yeah what are you drawing in so procreate that's great to know my daughter uh loves to draw dragons uh, mm -hmm. and and procreate's now become kind of her her tool of choice and yeah it's an amazingly powerful tool so i'm yeah. going to show i'm definitely after this i'm going to have to show her and be like this is done in procreate i think she'll be yeah, fascinated yeah. by that yeah that's yeah well and i do like I, I haven't been as active on my youtube channel as i'd like to be lately but i do have some videos on my youtube channel kind of about process and stuff like that 
So mm -hmm. there is yeah. some of that. It's one of my goals, uh, long-term goals is to be an, a resource to uh, aspiring illustrators and, and other illustrators that want to do this kind of work. I, um, I hit a wall. Uh, are you familiar with the, the what's it, the Dunning Kruger effect? I think it's called. I mean, I, I've heard the phrase, but I'm not. It's not. Yeah, it's, not coming it's, to it's essentially the the aspect of sort of like confidence versus knowledge, right? And oh, so, okay. oftentimes, young creatives are extremely confident, and you're like, "I can do what I can do this. I can do everything." And then you you hit a point where you start to realize, like, no, you kind of become aware of your lack of knowledge. And then there's this sort of dip yeah, yeah, the in dip, confidence yeah, yeah. where you, your confidence goes bloop. And then you still <laughs> kind of gain confidence again as you start to get a grasp for stuff. So I've always wanted to be really good at portrait at figure work, like drawing the human figure. That's like one of my long-term goals is to be just really accomplished at that. I was doing some, some practicing of um, in, with regards to uh, anatomy for a while, a couple of years back. And I sort of hit a wall where I was like, this is just too much. It was like, I'm climbing this mountain and I, I can't see the peak. It's just shrouded in this fog of overwhelming effort. Um, and being that I'm like, oh, I've got a full-time job. I've got a uh, family. We live on a little acreage that takes a lot of effort and time. Sure. And then all my other interests and everything, I'm like, this is just almost too much. So I kind of pulled it back and I was like, I'm just going to focus on portraiture for now. And so yeah. understanding drawing the human face is like already a mountain in, a, in and of itself if i want to really understand it and i sort of that's, that's that's a good point i mean that's that is a struggle i mean i've tried my hand in art and yeah. uh, and that that just itself the human figure of course but the face is just you know I, I had one of those classes where you you know you take an image you know you're trying to like recreate a huge image out of a small one and they have you break it up in a grid yeah you know and you're trying to like copy you know and I think I, you know, I did a face, but it must have taken me a month. You know, yeah. it's it's a very it's a, it's a it, it's an impressive skill. I mean, for the work that you've done, I mean, when I look at the faces, and that's really what I love. I mean, most about these images. I mean, the costuming is amazing too, but the the faces just, uh, like I said, they just feel so real and intense. I mean, they definitely portraying like emotions that I would that I would associate with those characters I think with Moiraine that's what I, I really like what that's would you awesome. from an advice perspective you know if I if you know I'm sure you know everyone out there is listening would love to know uh, how do you become good at is it just a matter of just keep doing it or how did you kind of become good at this uh, at capturing someone's face and being able to draw like that um, I mean it's it's effort and time it, there's no there's no real shortcut to anything um, even with the digital tool sets, uh, digital is just another tool. It's not like a, a get there quick, like a get rich quick quick scheme. I mean, there's definitely stuff that's nice and helpful about it. I I use it all the time as a as a crutch, if you would. Um, sure. Like with with many of these pieces, uh, because I sort of have an end goal in mind, I'm not necessarily working. There's like a layer, there's two layers to it. One is if I really want to sit down and study and try to grow as an artist, I'll just sit and I'll do portrait after portrait after portrait. And they'd be shorter studies, like 20 minutes at half hour at the most, just to kind of start to get the structure and understand the, the building and, and the composing the, the face. Um, with these, it's like, I know I'm going to have like anywhere between uh, like six to 30 hours of painting Ooh. in these. And so... So yeah, I mean, let me throw one up. Like, let's let's uh, take a look at Matt or Matram as we as we know him. I mean, as people are, as as we're talking here, you know, we'll leave this up just for a second. Yeah, like, tell me about how long. Yeah, people would love to that. How long did this one take you to put together? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to. The neat thing about uh, Procreate is it tracks your time. Go back. Okay. The neat, <laughs> frightening thing. <laughs> So generally, what would be? Yeah, guess, I mean, you know. these they're generally so like the so the one I just shared with you today, which um, I can talk about it because the commissioner already had has purchased it and everything. But I did oh, a, yeah. I did one of Logan, and I looked back; it was about six awesome. and a half hours uh, for that one. So six and a half hours of Logan. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it's a similar scope, right? The the mat Matrim one has uh, his hand. Okay, this is ridiculous. If you look at my Instagram post on that one in particular, I like to sh I like to show the picture in its entirety, and then yeah. I show a little uh, more detailed. Let's throw, let's throw let's throw Matram back up and uh, yeah, as you're so talking about it. So go ahead on yeah. Matt. On Matt, I was like, I was super happy with the hand. 
sounds stupid, but mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I was really happy with how I rendered the hand. So I put a nice big uh, detailed shot of, of his hand on my uh, Instagram feed. So that one took a little bit longer because there's a little bit more figure work and noodly detail in there. Um, there was also some research with that one, just trying to make sure I want to make sure that I'm one of the things I'm conscious of is I'm trying to make sure that I'm rendering things like the Ashendare, his spear, right? Correctly. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Like I, those are important details to me. So I took some time and did some research and I found some, uh, the script that's on the spear and sure. tried to render that correctly. And, you know, so there's, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's fun. It's, it's for me, it's well, fun because I'm nerding out about it. So it, it's, it's, a it's fun. I know. And, and again, I know you're, I don't know. Everyone takes these kind of things differently, but that hand is amazing. Like to me, when I see it, it just, it doesn't pull me out of the picture. Right. Sure. I'm not thinking to myself like, Oh yeah, this is, you know, this looks like a nice kind of cute piece of art. No, this is like, I feel like I'm seeing the actor in a costume and Whoa. you just happen to be kind of applying some filter over it to kind of give it, Whoa. you know, a, a style, like you've stylized an actual photo. And so I, yeah, I, for me at least that, that those pieces, the anatomy pieces are really important when you see them, right? Like you see the, you see the hand come up over here or whatever. And, and ha being able to do that well, you, you do it exceptionally well. I mean, in, in my opinion. Well, thanks. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I love that, that Matt, I think that one is my favorite. The Moraine oh, piece cool. is really cool too, but uh, that That's one awesome. is one of that one's one of my favorites. So you can tell that you, I can tell you did spend the time on that one because the hand just is like it's incredible. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, thanks. So, I, uh, and, and I know there were some. I just want to show I mean, maybe the audience a couple more. Egwene is really, really awesome too. Another one where kind of her hand is out straight in front of her, um, and that one's uh, that one's a lot of fun. And I love. I think you, the face again, the just, I feel like that is a Gwen to me. Like I can totally cool. see that, that person, that face there. And then there's uh, your image of Lan is really cool too. Uh, you know, uh, we'll show them that one. Like just. That one, so that one, I yeah, wanted, me, to, show, I wanted to show the, the, yeah. the golden cranes in the back. There's so many parts in the book. I don't know what it is. Like I just, I get almost emotional when they're like, the golden crane flies for time and again. And I'm like, yes. And I'm just like, I'm listening and I'm like getting like kind of weepy. I don't know what it is. I'm like, yeah, I yeah, want to go sure. follow land to death. Like it's going to be awesome. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to give some of that sort of feel like this sort of grandeur of that, of him and his, the meaning behind him and stuff. Um, yeah, you've done it again. It's that whole kind of concept of capturing something unique about them and including it. And it just, that one stands out is much different than the others mm -hmm. for those specific reasons. Right. Yeah. So I, I love that piece of land. Thanks. Uh, I know there were other ones there, but the commissions, that's mm -hmm. kind of want to ask you about that. I know you recently also did one. I don't think we have men's image to show people, but, um, but men, you did one from uh, one of men and now you've done one of Loghain. Are there other commissions is if someone's really curious about this and, and, and would like you to do that, is there some place that they should go and kind of say and, and let you know yeah. that they're interested in it? I think the easiest way to get a hold of me is just on my Instagram. That's where, uh, or I got, I've had a couple of people contact me through my Etsy store, um, but mostly Instagram. Um, if you just DM me on Instagram uh, and just chat with me about it. I'm, I'm working on another one right now. I'm just, I've just started it today. It's going to be quite interesting. Uh, it's a couple and, uh, they're they want themselves painted as an Aes Sedai and an Ashaman. Oh, cool! Together, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, right. it's going to be really interesting because this one will be sort of similar to the stuff I've done with the Wheel of Time ones, where now I've got um, portrait work of you know just these folks, and I I want to find sort of the right feel and stuff to bring their portraits into a fleshed out painting, so they feel like they are those things. So it's kind of a neat. It's a neat sort of like progression from actors and the show to now like regular people, but yeah, in yeah, the yeah. wheel of time, like these people could literally be an Aes Sedai and Ashaman in the story because everybody, like you know, yeah. you've got people from the two rivers that are throwing around, you know, fire and <laughs> crazy well, I mean, stuff. What's fun <laughs> is that you you definitely give each one of them a unique you know, style, whether that's the clothing or just the way they're positioned and such. I think Perrin's, I, I, I love, I love Perrin here. Uh, you know, yeah, just his, his, his clothing. If you guys haven't seen uh, Corey's stuff on Instagram, you should go. He does some uh, videos. We just don't have them. 
with us right now, but he shows kind of the process where he begins and uh, yeah. where he, where he ends. It's amazing. And this one I love. Uh, there's just, I love the eyes, the eyes here. They yeah. I just... want to really get that. Yeah. And he's, I feel like um, this was interesting. So you know how with the casting, I mean, you're familiar, there's been an interesting sort of, a little bit of, uh, if you want to call it kickback against some of the casting choices and stuff at the beginning of when all this started happening. Uh, I kind of saw it a little bit on my social media and stuff when I would post some of the work, just people talking about their their misgivings about the casting choices. Um, yeah. And that's part of the exercise for me too, was just I really wanted to see the, the actors as the characters. Perrin in particular was not how I imagined him uh, just from reading the books. Um, yeah. Marcus Rutherford was not what I would have chosen if I were to cast for the appearance. However, in doing the research that I did to do the painting of him, I was like, that dude can be Perrin. Like he's just, he's got a, a gravity to his, the way he carries himself and his, uh, he, there's, a, there's like an underlying tension that I think will really lend well to the screen because like, as you know, Perrin is just this really, uh, nuanced sort of under the surface character we read so much about him we get his character through his thoughts right and that's like you don't really see it's not a lot about his action it's about his internal struggles and his battles and the, this sort of like tortured or tortured soul that he is um and the struggles that he has and i feel like marcus rutherford will really really carry that well and that yeah. you'll be able to even though he, we're there's not a narrator saying, and then Perrin thought this, you're going to see him on screen. And I think some of those things are going to come through in his performance. I'm actually really excited. I was listening to your video about, um, about Perrin recently. You, you, I think it was about a month ago. You had a little bit of a, um, a panel and you guys were talking about Perrin. Um, and I just kind of think it's interesting that like, um, be, I think that it's going to be hard to get to, onto the screen just that yeah well and but you've what's fun about this at least for us as fans like for myself is we don't have any imagery really from the set i mean we we have very little right and mm -hmm. so this is a chance you've given us a chance to kind of take these characters put them in the role and like you just said i think i saw some comments here uh you know Perrin looks so dark and conflicted. I love it. Uh, that Perrin is haunting that's what i love about the Perrin you did uh yeah. i think there's a tendency to kind of like oh he's just this big lug of a guy who's just you know he's just kind of maybe dopey and slow in a corner and the way you've brought him out is like no i mean there's nothing dopey and slow about them he's just like you said he's conflicted mm -hmm. and there's an internal struggle going on and i think that absolutely comes out in his face there and yeah like i saw yours and i was like oh my gosh like if that is what you know <laughs> like yeah. i can totally get like that uh, absolutely that that is parent uh for me and that's and that's the fun part about this like you brought up that whole question of fans talking about like, oh, do do actors fit what they thought? The fun part here is these are the actors that, you, that have been chosen. And guess what? We don't have to worry about that anymore because they've been chosen. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's there's like there's no more fan casting for the actors yeah. that have been chosen. And yeah. what you've done is you've taken the actors and you've put them in. And and that's the fun part is we can now see them in the roles. And I'm sure for you, that's somewhat kind of this whole process for you is like, yeah. OK. How do I embody the things I know about Perrin with this actor? And and that's one of them. I, you know, everyone's the people in the chat uh, really loved that that yeah. one. I'm not, they've loved all of them, the ones we've shown them so far. But that is that's definitely awesome. uh, because it's something that they're. I don't think that that like there's something almost foreboding about his look, just look on his face. You know yeah. what you've done, and that, I love that you've added the conflict to it. It's great. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, and that's that's been one of the most rewarding things for me is when I've gotten comments from people uh, through Instagram or whatever where they're like, "Oh, I didn't see him as Perrin, but now I totally do. I can't wait to see him on screen." Right, and so yeah, yeah, uh, that's happened with a number of the of the actors, and that's it's rewarding. That keeps me going. Yeah, for those of you that are here, uh, this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. If you haven't liked the video, please do. And if you're here for the first time, come subscribe and support kind of more of these kind of interviews. You know, I love having, we'll have you back again, I'm sure, over over the ensuing years that, we, yeah. that we're going to be hopefully seeing Amazon Prime and talking about this thing. So yeah, if you're here, please give us a like. That's how other fans will find this video and see it. And yeah, we'd love to have you a subscriber. We'll continue to bring in artists and you know content other content creators and of course doing our fun little deep dives uh, so yeah if you're here please do that uh one thing that we told everyone and maybe now is a 
maybe now's a fun time to do. Would you like to do the commission, the, the pick a winner? Should we yeah, do the sure. pick a winner now? Let's let's do that. I'm sure a lot of people are kind of like, am I gonna win this this piece of artwork? So uh, what we what we talked about just a month and a half ago for those of you. That, don't know about this. Corey and I were like, hey, it'd be fun to put together. Oh yeah, he's holding up the image right now. Corey did this original piece of artwork of Rand. I love it. I love him just sitting there holding the banner. There's just something morose about it. Uh, there's another character who's internally conflicted. And <laughs> and uh, Corey was kind enough to to just say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna paint this and I'm, I'm draw this out and then I'm, I'm gonna give it to one of our viewers. Now, if you followed us on Instagram, you did have to kind of follow both of our accounts to enter. And so we have taken everyone's names. And if you if you I think we had it, so if you followed Patreon and did some other things, you could get your name in twice or three times. So we've we've put all these in here and we've done this before. We we put them all on the wheel. So why don't we give do this giveaway now? Uh, this will be a lot of fun. So everyone will see a wheel and we'll spin it. And yeah, let's let's see who wins it. So many little slices of the wheel. It's really cool. <laughs> As we're all like waiting with bated breath. And, uh, and it's Kalisco Collins is the winner of that. So we will follow up with the winner on Instagram. We'll send you a note. Thank you very much for participating, everyone. Uh, the the one right after this person is Takaran Riyadh. Joe, oh, you know, Joe yeah. from Takaran Riyadh. You almost won, man. <laughs> yeah. oh. What's funny about this, and I have to bring this up, I uh, we did a previous one with the wheel just like this, and and Joe actually won some test rounds, but then he didn't oh. win the actual. <laughs> so, so almost Joe. But Calistro, or however you pronounce their name, uh, we will get a hold of you on Instagram and we'll figure that out uh, between Corey and I how to get you that information, hopefully get your address, and we'll get yeah. you that one-of-a-kind piece by Corey. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you to everyone who uh, took part in that. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Now, uh, beyond the, the other piece, of, well, I do want to cover one more piece of art that you did, the mirror draw. I love this. Oh, great. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how everyone else envisions it. And I guess for me, I, I haven't really enjoyed a lot of mirror draw out there. Whenever people draw these things and sometimes I just don't get behind it. But this one, and I don't know if it's just the clothing that you've chosen. Uh, there's, there's something about it that's just, oh man, I, I love this one. This one's, I, I love, I love Matrim. Don't get me wrong, but I'd love this one's this one's haunting in a different way. This, yeah. this, is, this, is the, this is my favorite. So I had to bring this one up. Did you, and how did you enjoy doing this one? Was this one kind of just you like, hey, no one, no one's doing mirror draw. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw one. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to do more of the bad guys to be honest. Um, I've kind of been waiting for some of the casting to come through. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did enjoy it. I was a little. I kind of wanted it to end. It's, it's a little disturbing. <laughs> it's a, it was. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a little bit disturbing and haunting. Like the, I mean, the, the, they're so well written in the books as a villain um, and they're just twisted and scary. I really wanted to capture that sort of twisted underlying grossness to them. So, and I, and I, a lot of the ones that I've seen um, the artists bring the skull basically and connect it to the cheeks. So there's basically like no eye sockets. Yeah. But for whatever reason, when I read the books, I've always imagined it as they just don't have eyes. Like they're, they're like a normal face structure, but they're just eyeless. And I'm just like, that's kind of what I tried to capture was this weird, gross sort of like eyes, but not eyes. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's great. The tongue aspect did, was that, did you have that kind of like, I'm totally going to put the tongue kind of like <laughs> out of his mouth or is that like a last minute edition? Where did that come from? Uh, no, I think I, I think I, I intended that from the beginning. If I'm trying, if I remember correctly, it's, um, I think I wanted to, I've, I feel like they're, I feel like they violate uh, people in the books in every aspect of your, of their humanity. And I kind of want, I kind of did that as a sort of a, a nod to the, uh, that sort of aspect of kind of a, like the Joker or no? Well, yeah, they're sort of, they kind of are, it's, it's a, it's a, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a gross, um, 
it's gross. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and like, if that, yeah, yeah. If that thing was looking at me and looking at its lips, I just would feel like it was intending yeah. very bad things. Uh, and so I just, that's kind of what was going through my head. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like they sort of, uh, they, they feast on that in a way in the books, the way they're written. And it's, it's kind of something I wanted to get across was this sort of insatiable greed for people's torment. Yeah, that's, yeah. You, you succeeded. <laughs> that one, that one, it does kind of, it creeps you out a little bit. There's something about the kind of almost like greased back looking aspect yeah. to it that I, that you, if the, if you intended that, you absolutely got that. You hit that right on the nail for me. It's just, it's just gross. Yeah. I think gross is, is a great word for that image that you did. And it's perfect. Cool. Uh, but I did want to dig back into the books, uh, you know, and, and find a little bit, you know, I, I ran theory land, uh, you know, that's yeah. theories are, are a thing that I love. And I'm kind of curious, just from a fandom perspective, do you have a, a, a favorite theory? And before we jump into that one, I ask you that question before we do. This is a live call and talk show. <laughs> I, I want to remind everybody, if you want to give us a call, give us, it's 1-313-825-5968. That's 1-313-TALK-WATT. You can give us a call if you want to make a comment to Corey, tell him how much you loved one of his pieces of of artwork, you know, feel free to give us a call. If you, if you, if there's something that stood out today that you want to uh, say to Corey, we'd love to have you call in and, and chat with us. So, yeah. okay. So now back to this theory, do you have a favorite wheel of time theory that you've, you know, I mean, after reading the books or listening to the books that you just, there's so much. One of the things I do want to say before we jump into a lot of theory is the yeah. second read through, I was like floored at um, Robert Jordan's foreshadowing and writing and just the threads that he put into the book. It was yeah. in the in the very first, like one of the very first scenes in the Eye of the World when it's talking about Rand and, and Tam and they're on the road and they see the Murdral, or Rand sees the Murdral. And it talks about, a, it describes Rand how he's standing there and it talks about his cloak blowing in the wind like a banner. Yeah. And I was like, listen, I was like, what? <laughs> what? That was way, he did that. And I was like, it was just like brilliant to me. I was like, that of course the first time I, I listened to it i didn't pick that up but it was like there was all these moments like that throughout the books um i want to tell you this right now never picked that one up that's awesome well, that like oh, that, it, that gave me the chills you said that and i was like damn yeah it, damn it jordan yeah, it jim or so as you call him damn it jordan you, you did it again like yeah, yeah there's actually, so many of those like it's I never paused the book I, when i was listening to it, i paused it and i was just like what i was i think i was driving i was <laughs> but uh Man, yeah, so good. Um, but I, one of the things that I, I wanted to talk to you about, actually, I, there's yeah. a lot. But I, I was, I was kind of wanting to pick your brain on on the pipe okay. at the end. Pipe. So this is going. Okay. This is like, so, yeah. So big uh, spoiler. You, so yeah, we spoil. should probably throw that up. Okay. So up until this point, we've stayed <laughs> spoiler free. Now we're about to jump into theory territory. We'll probably be there for another five, ten minutes. And then we'll come back out of it. So if you're watching right now, I would, we'll try to, we'll try to, uh, we'll take down the banner. How about that? We'll put a banner up on the show. It says, reminder, the show contains spoilers. We'll leave that up there and we'll pull it down once we're done. So yeah, the pipe, hopefully yeah. everyone's, you know, that's watching or that's listening has paused or walked away at this point, because this <laughs> is a spoiler for the very end. You've, you've picked the very yeah. end of the book. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, so, but yeah, this, no, this, yeah. This, it, it just, you, you go ahead and set it up. You're probably going to do a better job than I would. So, so one of the most popular theories, which I'm a fan of because I love Teleron Riyadh. One of the kind of popular theories is that somehow this creates or that Rand is able to generate some kind of Teleron Riyadh bubble mm -hmm. around himself where he can manipulate, you know, space and time, if you will, or, you know, however you want to, think about Teleron Riyadh and he somehow can do things with thought and not need any connection to a particular power source other than I guess if you think about it Teleron Riyadh so mm -hmm. that is certainly uh, one of the popular theories uh, Mary is in chat right now she's saying we're all idiots it's just a Teleron <laughs> Grail she's like it's a Teleron Grail that's it there's no <laughs> there's no problem here there's no like weird mystery I could be and, it, and admittedly it is the simplest answer and it yeah. definitely does put us to somewhat of a shame of saying like, okay, so there's, that there is something potentially simple here. It could be, but it, it feels a bit much to think that I think this is one of those scenes that Robert Jordan had planned for a long time yeah. and that it was simply a, a Teron Grail. I don't know. I don't that, think so. I, 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 don't I hate think that so answer. So, so yeah, I, you tell I, me. I call BS on that <laughs> because, because you can't like how, okay. So, Rand just went through everything that he went through. 
I mean, he's like, he did everything that he did. And then it just casually mentions, cause, cause it, in that moment, it talks about him in the book. It talks about him re- trying to reach out for the one power and it's not there. And he was happy. It says like, it kind of reflects on it. Like he was kind of sad, but happy that it wasn't there and kind of relieved. Yeah. Um, and then he just chooses. It's like he chose instead to do something other to light the pipe. The way that I, the way that it's, I think, yeah. she, I think let me you're hear, yeah, let me hear yours. Yeah. Yeah. She needs to go back and read it, I think. Um, So (laughs) I feel like, so it's interesting that you mentioned like pulling from Teleron Riyadh. I was kind of thinking that it was a similar idea to yours, but sort of, and I don't know if this is like way out there, but I was thinking, what if he's pulling on, you know how like throughout the whole process, there's all these bubbles of evil and all this stuff going Mm -hmm. on. It's crazy and chaotic, which is just a byproduct of the Dark One's touch on the world. I kind of felt like, in everything that Rand went through, is it possible that he became sort of a conduit for bubbles of good? That sure, yeah. There's like the creator or whatever. I don't know where it specifically it's coming from, but there's something that happened that sort of gave him a direct link to just sort of manifestations of good. Similar to when he came down from the mountaintop and things were growing around him and there was all this stuff going on. Yeah. Um yeah, but you could now, certainly tie it to, uh, as we call him, Jesus Rand. You certainly yeah. could tie it to his, um, the dragon is one with the land, right? This concept mm-hmm. of that he has some ability to affect the the world at a level that's not directly tied to him being, you know, uh, or him having access to the one power. You know, that certainly from a perspective of, you know, people call him the avatar of light, uh, you know, this idea. So I bubbles of of light you know uh you know bubbles of good you know bubbles of tar- teleron riyadh some kind of influence that he asserts outside of it seems to be the most rational and fits in with the metaphysics you know so absolutely i think uh, i think you're onto something i love your explanation uh you know and for those that are watching uh, we will take down the spoiler banner and 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 no longer spoil the show for you so you can come back those of you that are listening I don't know how you're going to find this. If you're just listening, you'll hopefully have skipped ahead 10 minutes and you will know that we are no longer talking about this, this, uh, this idea. So let's, we did have a caller. Let's, uh, let's bring him in to the show. Hey, Lauren, welcome to the LST Wheel. How you doing, man? Hey, good. How are you guys doing? Good. How you doing? Today? So, so what's your hey, comment Lauren. question uh, for, uh, for Corey? Well, I just mostly wanted to say thank you for what you're doing for the little time community. I think your artwork is phenomenal, and I just love what the Wheel of Time community is creating. And I also love how um, different content creators and stuff are sort of helping each other out, which I really appreciate. So that's really what I want to say. I don't have any specific questions. Just keep doing what you're doing, and I, I love your work. Well, and Lorna, what's your what what's your favorite uh, of the Wheel of Time pieces that you've seen? Uh, Corey, do do you have one that just kind of stands out to you? Oh boy, it's hard to say. I <laughs> I love the renditions of the cast, the cast um, being put into the roles that we love them in, like uh, Rosamund Pike's face on the rain uh, using the one power. I love that one. I love the one of Matt. They're just they're great. Yeah, stunning. Uh, this is. This is uh, the response we get everywhere. I, th- I think I was seeing online uh, when I posted some of these images to Facebook. You know, there was lots of, I think Rosamund Pike was one of the favorites, Matrim, and then Egwene was one of the favorites I saw, and then Lan. Oh, yeah. It doesn't sure. surprise me. Those, uh, it doesn't surprise me those kind of group up together like yeah, that. Yeah. Hey, well, Lauren, as always, we appreciate your work. You do it unraveling the pattern. I appreciate you uh, calling in and uh, and wishing Corey well. Absolutely. I, I, I do appreciate that uh, as having done this youtube channel for now seven eight months whatever it is that's that's been the part of the joy is just kind of meeting other content creators and yeah. talking about the wheel of time with them so yeah too many more moments just like this right yeah. hey thanks well, lauren i uh, oh, yeah, go I, ahead. I, I got a shout out i got a shout out lauren really quick he probably won't like me doing this but he's he's <laughs> a patron on my patreon account we just kind of recently became a patron and uh he i was nervous about tonight <laughs> i was like and because he's been on your show before, I was like, I'm really kind of nervous. I'm telling my patients. And he's just like counseling me through Patreon. Don't worry, man. You got this. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do great. Don't worry. 
So thanks, Lauren. I, I'm, it's like I'm getting uh, counselor, counseling advice through him as well as uh, support on my Patreon. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's part of the level that you signed up for, Lauren. Is the, yeah, uh, yeah. Counselor, yeah. The yeah. artist, the counselor yeah. level. I love yeah. that. <laughs> pay, pay to counsel me. <laughs> hey, Lauren. Thanks, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye. It. Thank you. Yeah, Lauren's a good guy and extremely talented. Uh, that's, mm-hmm. yeah, I think uh, Nablus, uh, another YouTuber, uh, I'm not sure you're familiar with him. He's, yeah. he's done so much work and is so popular. And that's one of the things he brings up is just there's so many more creators on YouTube, so many more artists that I've seen, just so many more that it's just been a lot of fun to get to know them. Mm-hmm. And there are just, if this makes sense, there are so many people that there, there can never be enough content creators, in my opinion. Yeah. Just like go out and find, you'll find your niche, you'll find your group of people that want to to uh, follow your art. You know, you're not going to, as you well know this, not everyone's going to love your art, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's there's going to yeah. be detractors. They're going to like a different style. Totally. You have a specific style, how you've been doing these that appeals to some and doesn't appeal to others. And that's kind of, yeah. I think from a content creation standpoint, that's that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Like people are going to like certain shows, certain ways of people speaking about things. So. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that was a fun theory that you brought up. I love that one. What, definitely, be it'll be fun from to do have you back on and maybe talk less art and just kind of dig oh, into more. Of the man, show, I'm, I'm more into of the, it. More I, of the I'd be books down for that. Oh yeah, I'd be I'd be so down for that. I'm I'm into it. How, have you been following all of the news about Wheel of Time on Prime? And you know, have you been have you been kind of following along what's what's happened and then the yeah. episode titles and such. And is there, mostly I'm asking, is there something you're really excited about that you've heard or that you've seen so far that you can't, you, know, you can't wait for? Hmm. I mean, I was excited to hear one of the things that excited me was when I first saw, I think it was Rafe put up a picture of the writer's room for season two. I was encouraging to me yes, and I know, yeah, right, I know right. it's still not locked in. Right. I think they need to get through season one and, start to see how the sort of early impressions are and stuff. But that, that excited me. Um, yeah, that was, that was, yeah. When that came out, everyone was just like, yes. And I, I don't know that, I mean, I guess Rafe did, <laughs> Rafe did yeah. make a comment recently on one on prime panel. It sounds like they're moving forward. I don't think it's officially been no. lit or anything, but certainly they're moving forward with the assumption uh, that they're, they're going to have the stuff written and prepared. Yeah, if it is. And, and that's exciting for us because that's the one thing I'm, fearful not fearful of i just it'd be really terrible if we only got one season <laughs> just give us i want yeah. two seasons just please two plus you know i i'll be okay with two and of course what will happen is we'll get two seasons i'll be like we just need four four seasons then i'll, <laughs> yeah. then I'll be happy <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um, yeah so I, so i have this thing called the portal, yeah. st- portal stone round um and oh it sounds like uh maybe uh we have somebody jumped into the call uh yeah welcome to the dusty wheel john can you hear us yeah, I can hear you. Okay, great. I hey, caught uh, y'all late. I just off work, so I missed part of the program. But uh, I, I see his prints, and I'm just learning of Corey, and I was wondering where I can get my prints. Oh, gotcha. okay. Yeah, you can uh, you can go to his uh, his Etsy store, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can find uh, yeah his Etsy store. Just look him up. I think you can go follow him on Instagram, and and you can find it there. Is there yeah. one that you? I'm just kind of curious of of all the work uh, that uh, Corey's done. Is there? Is there? Do you have a favorite? Uh, a favorite character? A favorite piece of art that he's done? Well, I haven't really seen many of them, but Moraine is beautiful. I saw that one just now, and I like the land. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot more uh, scenes that can be built there. I mean, you got plenty of folks <laughs> yeah, to work yeah. from. Plenty Sorry, Matt, I got to go. I got to paint. Sorry. I got to <laughs> Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, thank you, John. I appreciate you calling in, man. Hey, have a good night. Okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Bye-bye. Bye. So, yeah, yeah that's... If, uh, that, that, if, people, if people are curious more about my stuff, like I've got a link tree on my Instagram and they can reach, they can find all my stuff there. My YouTube and everything is linked there. So, yeah, absolutely. So this is called the uh, Portal Stone round, and this is meant to be kind of like just one of those lightning rounds, right? We just call it Portal Stone. I'm just gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Just give me the answer that comes to your mind quickest. <laughs> okay. And we might go back and you know we might go back and kind of address some of these because every once in a while something catches me off guard, and I'm like, really? <laughs> and then I want to stop, but we'll, we'll we'll try to go quickly and we'll come back. So fa- favorite Wheel of Time book. Uh, Memory of Light. Favorite Wheel of Time villain. Pot and Fame. Favorite Wheel of Time channeler. Hmm. 
Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Uh, uh, hmm. That's a toss up for me. Do I have okay. to pick one? You have to pick one. Uh, <laughs> give give it to me. First Rand. time. Rand. Rand. Okay. Uh, character you disliked the most when you first kind of went through the books. Uh, hmm. <laughs> this is really hard. <laughs> Whichever first one that came to mind. Uh, give it to me. <laughs> uh, it, hmm. It's going to be, uh, you know what? It's a, it's Grandal. Grandal. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. So now give me, uh, have you, and, and maybe everyone doesn't have this. Uh, I think having followed the book so long and, you know, I have these kind of ready in my head, but is there a critique of the wheel of time that you'd say just like a quick critique? If it was one sentence like this about the wheel of time bugs me. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it it bugs me that there's some stuff I feel is left unfinished. <laughs> yeah, the uh, that is definitely how Jordan was going to troll us all. He he yeah. did it on purpose, right? The, what uh, what do you love most? Sell me on the wheel of time in 15 seconds. Like, what's your what's your go to sentence to sell me on it? Uh, it's a incredibly rich um, read with vast array of cultures and people groups that come together to create this really rich tapestry of storytelling that, that really is tied around uh, your quintessential hero's journey. You sold me. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you were prepared for that one. That one no, probably. no, that was off the cuff. That's off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now, favorite fantasy author. Do you have one that's not Robert Jordan? Yeah. I, um, so, I mean, right now I'm, I'm really into a lot of Brandon's work, Brandon Sanderson. Sure. Uh, I'm listening to the Stormlight Archives for the second time right now, kind of leading up to book four coming out. Um, I've listened to, and well, I've listened to or read most of his other work. Um, a couple, a couple pieces outstanding. I haven't done any of the, uh, the more specul uh, the science fiction stuff. Yeah. I haven't gotten into that, but, um, yeah, he's, he's really inspirational. Uh, his writing is it's kind of in line with Jordan's in terms of the the scope and breadth of what he's doing. It's crazy. Um, just knowing, having tried to write a couple novels, I'm like, good grief! It's it's quite the epic undertaking <laughs> yeah. that I have a, a lot of respect for. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and you did. If I am I mistaken, or did you do a drawing of Kaladin? Also? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I and uh, yeah, that one has been really well received too. I had yeah. a lot of uh, feedback on that one. It's very positive feedback. And I do, I've, I've done a number of sketches uh, for pieces for the Storm, Stormlight Archives as well, which I do, I will get to those. I feel like right now I'm just really on this uh, wheel of time train. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to get sure. off. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're in, a, you're in a groove right now. The, yeah. The stuff is stunning that you put together. So I, I understand. Yeah. Uh, you know, I understand how you've gotten there. I think, like I joked with you, I'd, I'd love to see like an like an Asmodine scene where he's 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 walking and he and he has his classic you yeah, oh, yeah. kind of moment. Yeah. I'd I'd love to see that the the, the look on his face. I, that's yeah. Uh, someday, someday maybe we'll I get think, there. I think first we have to. I think first we have to come to an agreement about who it was, and then I can more better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to do it. So I love this. We'll have to have Harriet needs to tell me. Harriet we'll needs have... to tell me. What, <laughs> yeah. what Robert Jordan intended. We should maybe I'll have you do it who it actually was going to be and not the person that yeah. really changed it to be <laughs> without spoiling anything for anybody watching. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, last last question here. If you had been born 200 years ago, what would you have wanted to do as a profession? Oh, cool. Uh, I mean, I would have loved to be doing something in the arts like I am now. I, it's still my dream to be really doing kind of what I would want to be doing back then. I'd love to be, and this is kind of funny, right? Like, I feel like we're entering this age where it's hearkening back to a time when artists were supported by a patron. Oh I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> like it's, it's like, I really believe in Patreon as a platform. I know a lot of creative people and content creators are on there and I really believe in it in terms of uh, what the potential of it is because it, it really creates this space where uh, creatives like I would have been in 
back then, hopefully yeah. I would have gotten brought in as somebody's apprentice and then, you know, make my fingers bleed by drawing and then get to a point where I'm sort of being supported <laughs> by the church or something to do these massive uh, murals or I don't know, whatever. Maybe I'm 200 <laughs> years ago. That wasn't happening. Maybe I got to go like 500 years ago, <laughs> but it's like that kind of an idea where I feel like right now we're in a space where with the internet and with, with the way things are that, content creators can really connect directly with their audience. Um, and it's not, there's not a huge ask uh, a lot of times on the part of the um, supporters. So a lot of content creators have like a $1 option or whatever. And it's like a dollar a month isn't a lot to me as an individual, but if I give a dollar to that, to someone who's creating stuff and a hundred people give a dollar to that person, that becomes yeah. something for that person that is substantial. And, uh, and very encouraging. I, I think one of the challenges, sorry, I'm going off. No, this no. Wasn't, this <laughs> wasn't the, the no, I love, the, I, love the, I love the support because I know a lot of content creators are using Patreon and I know that they appreciate it, especially when you think about what's going on today. Yeah. You know, a lot of content yeah. creators are, you know, wholly, you know, they're counting on, you know, uh, they're, they're, yeah. they're, that there are Patreons out there that are actually wanting their work and supporting yeah. them in, in what they're doing, uh, especially because yeah. maybe they're out of their full-time job at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And even, even just little bits of like, I'm not, I don't have a huge following on my Patreon account, but the, the little bits of encouragement that I get from my patrons is just so, uh, it's hard to quantify that. And counseling. And counseling. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it like the little bits of feedback and that support, like that encouragement and support it, that like, like what Lauren gave me, that stuff is hard to quantify. And I think creatives are, from my experience and working with a lot of creatives, they're largely emotional creatures. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and this game of trying to grow as a creative can be draining and, and taxing. And I think when you've got people responding to your work in a positive way, it just feeds you. And it just helps you, it lifts, lifts your spirits and it helps you kind of continue on in your journey. So I think that, yeah, I would want to be like a classically trained painter working on very large, big, epic murals of some kind. That would be. Okay. By favorite. the way, you've brought this up. I didn't bring it up, but I feel like now you have to do a super large mural of the <laughs> Like I feel like you've just you just said it. You you are that guy. You're like you're you're you have patrons and yep. and uh, yep. you now we we need a super large mural across a yep. wall and I need to see it. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. go. <laughs> I'll use. I've got a we've got a barn, an old 1940s barn here on the property, and it's got a really big loft. I'll just get a big canvas set up in there and start painting. Yeah. Someday yeah. when I'm a someday when I'm a millionaire, what I'll do is have you like draw all of my guests that I've had at the dusty wheel, you know, <laughs> that'd be awesome. That's awesome. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for answering those, those lightning round questions. Uh, I would, you know, there, there are a couple there where I'm like, you know, I'm going to save that one for next time. I want to talk Pat and Fane, but I think he's a fun kind of theory topic that I think what we can do is bring yeah. you back in and have you kind of describe that. I think leaving it on the note of that Patreon for those of you that are watching, those of you in the chat, thanks for being here. Uh, those who are watching us on Facebook and Twitter, Thank you for watching along here. Hopefully you enjoyed the art and the discussion here with Corey. And and do go support, whether or not it's Corey, go support someone on Patreon if you can afford it. Totally. Uh, they, they really appreciate it. It does, I absolutely agree with this, it does encourage those content creators to go out and keep doing it, right? Like uh, following their passion. It's really helpful. So if you can find a way to support a Patreon, uh, you know, as a Patreon today, please go do that. That would be fantastic. You can find Corey's links in the description of the video. Go follow him on Instagram, certainly. And and certainly if you want to be a, a Patreon there, go there too. I know he'll appreciate that. Yeah. And and I appreciate you being here, uh, by the way. Oh. And for doing that piece of artwork, Calistro, I am surprised, Calistro, I don't know how to pronounce, Collins, you were the winner of that original piece of artwork. We'll contact you soon about that. And and a final note, please, again, give, it the, give this video a like. If you're watching on Facebook or Twitter or you happen to be here in live chat, Subscribe to the channel. We'll do. We'll keep doing this stuff. What's good for the next year until we finally get a premiere, and then well beyond that. I can't wait to do this every week because it's live. It's Watt Wednesday, and it's talking about all about the wheel of time. So, Corey, thank you so much for for being here for answering the questions. Uh, really appreciate it. And as we say around here at the Dusty Wheel, good night and smash to black. If you want news, the roof.